cyclists! Bloody cyclists! If dodgy TV recreations are any guide... Bike rage is a big problem. Even more compelling, over 70% of cyclists get harassed once every two weeks. I don't. Get lost! That's why your average car driver might only cop it a few times a year. So why are we so angry with cyclists so often? And why do they all deserve it? You mean, do we deserve it? Yeah, that's what I said. Studies into the topic are alarming especially when delivered by a silhouette representing all bike rager statistics. Yeah, sure. We bike ragers harass about 70% of cyclists, but we are creative. Of those, we scare the life out of 66% of them by driving really close, and we shout abuse at about 63% of them, so the lucky ones got both. But... For a special 45%, we save the best. Nice basket, sunshine! A little bit of sexual harassment or an obscene gesture or two, if you know what I mean. Do ya? Do ya? And if you'd like to increase your chance of being targeted, wearing lycra is a good start. But why all the abuse? It must be because they cause so many accidents. That's actually not correct. And a large study that was done in Queensland, which looked at all crashes between cyclists and motor vehicles between 2000 and 2008, found that in only 44% of those cases was the cyclist deemed to be at fault. So that means that the majority of those crashes were actually caused by motorists. And the majority of the time, the cyclists at fault were under 16 or over 80 years old, not middle-aged men in Lycra. So if anything, we're abusing the wrong people, right? Uh, Simon, I'm not quite sure of your logic there, but what are you I don't talking think about? I'd be interpreting it that way. <laughs> Whatever. None of them have any regard for road rules. They're constantly running red lights. They're a menace. He's got a point. Well, no, not really. We used a covert video camera at 10 signalised intersections across Melbourne. We looked at over 4,000 cyclists who rode up to the red light, and only 6.9% went through. Almost. 7%. Now you know why we're so angry. Another good point. Well, no, not really. If you look at the AAMI index, in 2009, about a quarter of drivers were booked for speeding and 5% for going through red lights. So drivers are lawless too. What do you make of that? I don't know. But Simon, I think this story is an example of one of the problems, how people don't take this issue seriously. With your dodgy reenactment and your shouty silhouette man, I mean, this is a serious issue. People can get really hurt on the roads, but for some reason on social media, on any social forum, it seems OK to attack cyclists, when really they're just people on their bikes trying to get where they need to go. Uh, need to take the risk of I'm regretting this next piece to camera already. So why do cyclists get so much abuse? Well, some theories have been put forward by Psychologists? Well, then we're going to need a lot So it's all about out-group homogeneity bias. You sure you don't want a latte? Quite sure. It's about making generalisations about a group of people with whom we don't empathise. So some people would say that all Gen Ys are slack. But of course, it's not true. So similarly with bike riders, there's an assumption out there that some bike riders all behave in a certain way and that that is then generalised whenever we see a bike rider on the road. And in a different way, we look at motorists as being part of us, one of us, the in-group. And so when we see a motorist breaking through a red light or travelling at a high speed, we see that as a trait that's attributable to the individual rather than to the whole group. But while our brains seem biased, our eyes aren't helping either. Studies suggest car drivers have difficulty seeing bicycles, particularly if they aren't expecting them. And when we don't see the bike until the last minute, we see rage. Bloody cyclists! A study that analysed 500 looked but failed to see crashes concluded that drivers failed to see a two-wheeled vehicle because they were looking for other cars, not bikes. And because cyclists sit between half and one metre higher than drivers, with 180 degrees unimpeded vision, what seems reasonable to them might seem dangerous to drivers. What's the matter with you people? One of my studies found that. <sighs> 
everybody's spatially aware observant cyclists. 